Into the time capsule of today, I think I would put, so that people would know in the future what our problem was, I'd put Laverne and Shirley. When I used to come out of the shower in my fatter days and uh, be confronted with the mirror, I thank God that I was nearsighted. If I were a psychiatrist and was limited to one patient, I would choose Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Behind every successful man, <laughs> is a woman saying, what did you do that for, stupid? This is Famous Last Words. And this week, our special guests are from Mama's Family, Vicki Lawrence. From Falcon Crest, Abby Dalton. From Proper John, M.D., Charles Siebert. And from Three's Company, Richard Klein. And now, here's your host, Jeff Edwards. Thank you very much. Welcome to Famous Last Words. Now, if, if you think you know the famous people that you see on television or in the movies, the people you read about in the newspapers and the magazines, you're in maybe for a few surprises. On Famous Last Words, we challenge you to see through the public image and into the real person. Right now, let me introduce our two teams, and we'll start off with Vicki Lawrence. Hi, Vicki. How the heck are you, Jeff? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm just swell. <laughs> delighted to have you here with us. Thank you. You'll be helping our contestant, Kathy Cyphers. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Kathy, uh, what do you do for a living? I am an emergency room nurse. Ah, exciting business. And you are right next to the right guy, because we have Charlie Siebert from Trapper John, M.D. Charlie, right, how you doing? Jeff, you nurse emergency rooms? Uh, Is that what you do? Well. Never mind. Right. <laughs> now to the competition. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Abby. We'll say hello to Abby Dalton. Abby, how's your tennis? Uh, not as good as yours, I'm sure. Oh, I bet it is. It's good to have you here. Thank you, Jim. You'll be helping our, our contestant, Ted Wells. Ted, welcome. Hi, thank you. What do you do for a living? I'm a waiter in Westwood. Well, okay. We'll have a good time here, I'm sure, because you're next to a very funny guy, Mr. Richard Klein. I'm an emergency room actor. <laughs> Good. If we're all set, then let's play Famous Last Words. Now, over the last few weeks, we've been conducting private interviews with many people in the public eye, and they gave us their personal feelings and attitudes about themselves and about the people around them. We have their answers, and we challenge you to predict exactly what they said. One other points win the game. We're going to begin on your side, Vicki. If you will take a look behind me, you'll see a picture of Lynn Redgrave and a picture of Vincent Price. Mm -hmm. Now, which of these celebrities would you like your panel to try to predict? I think we'll go with Lynn. With Lynn Redgrave. Okay, uh, you know Lynn Redgrave. She's a fine actress. Uh, she comes from a very fine English family. And we ask Lynn Redgrave this question. How do you react when you see an X-rated movie? And Lynn said, I'm a little embarrassed, but it's a great turn-on for me. Or... She said, I'm a little embarrassed, and I've never seen an X-rated movie all the way through. So what do you think? Do you think uh, Lynn is turned on by X-rated movies, or, or does she just not see them all the way through? For 10 points, a correct answer, what do you think, Vicki? Well, let's see. Gee, if they are a great turn on, for, they are for me, too. I've never seen one all the way through, too. I get too horny before it's over. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to say she's a little embarrassed, but she's never seen one all the way through. Okay, one vote for never seen one all the way through. <laughs> Kathy. Um, I think that Lynn Redgrave might have been a little bit embarrassed and think it's a little turn on for her. So I will go with the first one. You think that she gets turned on by X-rated Yes, movies? I do. She might be. Uh, the British did bring us Benny Hill, so... Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Charlie, what do you think? All the way through what? Uh, That's what I... <laughs> <laughs> I think Lynn is, uh, uh, I think, quite a liberated lady, and I think she probably said she's a little embarrassed, but that it's a great turn-on for her being an honest person. Okay, two votes for a great turn-on. Lynn Redgrave, how do you react when you see an X-rated movie? I'm intrigued, and then I'm a little embarrassed. And I've never seen an X-rated movie all the way through. the correct answer, so you have 10 points, okay. Kathy. And now let's see how your competition does. We have uh, Vincent Price is still there, and we'll bring Rita Moreno into the picture. So, uh, Abby, who do you want to uh, predict for your panel? I'm going to try for Vincent. For Vincent Price. Okay, he's right there next to you. Because of who he is, we asked Vincent Price this question. 
You've been responsible for frightening millions of moviegoers, but what frightens you the most? And Vincent said being interviewed by Barbara Walters. <laughs> or Vincent Price said, I'll soon be 72 years old, my friend, and there's only one thing left to frighten me. So you think a man as sophisticated as Vincent Price would be uh, frightened by Barbara Walters, or does he fear the thing that's uh, going to approach all of us one day or another? Well, I think Barbara Walters frightens everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the second answer, because mm -hmm. of, of the very reason that he said it. Okay, okay. One vote for uh, the end approaching, yes, maybe sooner than, than he wants it to. Yes. All right, ten points per correct answer. Ted. Well, I think Vincent's a very together man. I, I don't think he'd be that afraid of death. Um, he's had such a full life, so I would think... Um, Barbara Walters does scare everyone. I think that's what he said. A vote for Barbara Walters. Yeah. Well, Richard? Well, I actually have uh, met uh, Vincent uh, on several occasions, distinguished man, and I know the one thing left that is to frighten him, and that is an appearance on Battle of the Network Stars. <laughs> <laughs> so... I we all just assumed it was dead, right? <laughs> no, no way. The man is young. He really is young, and he's young at heart. So I would say Barbara Walters frightens me too so I, I go with Vincent on the first one. Okay two votes for Barbara Walters. Vincent Price what frightens you the most? The thing that would frighten me the most I think is probably being interviewed by Barbara Walters. Hey! Vincent on Hollywood Squares for three years, and I would have sworn that he would have said this, the being 72 years old, and there's nothing left to frighten him except that hole in the ground. Well, I guess maybe Barbara's more frightening than, than the hole that in the hole ground. in the ground, yes. <laughs> Two correct answers, it's 10 like points apiece, gives you 20 points. Let's go over to Kathy's team. We have, uh, let's see, Rita Moreno is still here. We will add Mike Farrell. And Kathy, who would you like your team to predict? I think that um, I'll go with Rita Moreno. Okay. We said, Rita, what are you most self-conscious about? And Rita said, my breasts. <laughs> <laughs> or Rita Moreno said, I'm not the self-conscious type. I am who I am, and you can take it or leave it. So do you think that Rita Moreno is self-conscious about her breasts or, or not self-conscious at all? Well, I would be self-conscious a little bit about my breast. So, being that Rita Moreno is now playing opposite Dolly Parton's sister, um, <laughs> comparisons are odious. One would really have the same problem. So, I would go with that she said that she's afraid of or, or feels embarrassed about her breasts. Okay, uh, one vote for uh, for Rita's breast. For Rita's breast. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie, for helping me out of that. Two votes for me. Charlie Seaver, what do you think? Is Rita Moreno self-conscious about her breasts or not self-conscious at all? You know, I've never seen a Barbara Walters interview all the way through. <laughs> I just wanted to go on record as saying it. Uh, I worked with Rita a couple of times. Uh, she is not a self-conscious lady. She is who she is. And I'm going to go with that. I think that she uh, would say, take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Yeah, she's been mm. around for a long time. And sure has. Maybe she has that attitude now. Vicki, what do you think? Is Rita Moreno self-conscious about her breasts or take it, take me as I am? I think Dolly Parton and her sister should be self-conscious about their breasts. <laughs> it's not fair. Okay, let's see. Rita is uh, far too... She, I don't think she's self-conscious about anything. Take it or leave it. Two votes for Rita Moreno not being self-conscious about anything. Rita Moreno, what are you most self-conscious about? My breasts! I'm so sorry I did this. Well, Kathy, I don't believe it. Well, there she is. She's honest. Why? What's that, you, Vicky? Why would you be about self-conscious about something you can't even see? I don't understand. I'm not going to answer that at all. <laughs> you have one correct answer. Ten points gives you a total now of 20 points, Kathy. Let's go over to your opponents. Rita and uh, her problems have left us. We have Mike Farrell, and we will add to Mike Farrell Phyllis Diller, an interesting duo for sure. Ted, which of the stars do you want your panel to predict? Well, I love MASH. I always have, so I'm very interested in Mike Farrell. 
Let's see what Mike Farrell has to say. We asked Mike this question. What's the most difficult thing for you to tell another person? And he said that you don't care for them in the way that they want to be cared for. Or he said, the most difficult thing for me was my last goodbye to Alan and all my friends on MASH. Mm. Do you think Mike has a problem telling his honest feelings to someone who they might hurt? Or does he have a tough time saying goodbye after a period of time to friends? I don't think he has trouble telling people what he feels. So I would go with saying goodbye to MASH cast must be very difficult for him. Yeah, he was there for a long time, yeah, and uh, he did have to, to say be, goodbye. That has to be sure. hard. Sure does. I, I would say, though, that uh, we know that Mike has recently been separated from his wife and now going through a divorce, so maybe something else was on his mind. I don't know. Uh, Richard? <laughs> um, every interview I've seen with Mike, I haven't met the man personally, but he is a very sensitive, uh, serious uh, young man. And I think that, uh, heck, he has Alan Alda's home phone number. He could call him up. He gets lonely. <laughs> so I would say that... The most difficult thing would be that you don't care for them in the way they want to be cared for. Okay, vote for not caring for them in the way they want it to be cared for. Yep. And Abby, what do you think? How does He's available it... again, is he? Uh, yeah. <laughs> not that I am. No. I mean, not that I care. Yeah. Uh, I happen to have met him mm -hmm. uh, on several occasions, and he's a charming man and very, very sensitive. And I think he said that they don't care, that I don't care for them in the way that they want to be cared for. Okay, two votes effect. going in that direction. Mm -hmm. And let's now find out exactly what Mike Farrell said. I think that probably the most difficult thing to tell someone else would be that you don't care for them in a in a in the way they want to be cared for. Hi. All right. Very Tough thing to tell anybody in uh, Tough to Cure from Mike Farrell. Our two celebrities sure know uh, Mike Farrell. Two correct answers, 10 points apiece. 20 points giving you now a total of 40 points, Ted. Over to the competition. You got your work cut out for you guys. We still have uh -huh. Phyllis Diller there, and we're going to add Steve Allen. Two great comedians. Charles, who do you want to pick for your panel to predict? I'm so stunned by how beautiful Phyllis Diller looks. I want to hear what she has to say. Okay, let's pick Phyllis Diller. And, and because she now is in a relationship with a younger man, we asked her this question. What's the biggest advantage of an older woman dating a younger man? She responded immediately, his sexual prowess will last longer, be better timed. Or... Phyllis Diller said, if he's a younger man, there's just so much I can teach him. <laughs> what do you think, Charles? Phyllis Diller more interested in teaching or... Timing. Timing. <laughs> uh, interesting, interesting. Aren't those interesting choices? Uh, I, I have the feeling that she is rather, in spite, of, in spite of her tremendous outgoing nature in her comedy, I have a feeling she's has a lot, a great sense of propriety. So I, I don't think she's going to talk about sexual prowess. I think she's going to say, if he's a younger man, so, there's so much that she can teach him. And me, not just sex, but lots of things. Lots of things, sure. Where okay, okay. one vote for teaching. And all Vicky, teaching or timing? Well, the mind boggles. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> <clears throat> I think she probably said that there's a lot she can teach him, tongue in cheek, and I'm sure with a great comedy delivery. I can't imagine delivering the other line with a great deal of comedy time. Two votes uh, for teaching. Kathy, you go along with what the celebrities say? I, um, I think that I'll have to disagree with both my teammates. Go ahead. Second because Kathy, I it. really think that Phyllis Diller would come out with a good timing on his sexual prowess will last longer and be better timed. So. Oh. Oh, she is a comedian, so timing may be important to her. I think she said it. <laughs> All right. Let's find out. <laughs> Phyllis, what's the biggest advantage of an older woman dating a younger man? The, the advantages of an of a older woman dating a younger man are many. Number one, his sexual prowess will last longer, uh, be more, uh, better timed. <laughs> you were right again, Kathy. One correct answer, another 10 points, brings you up to a total of 30 now. And we'll go over to your competition. We have uh, Steve Allen is still with us, and we add Peter Fonda. 
What do you is say? Is it my turn? Yes, it's your turn. Who would well, you like to predict? Well, uh, one of my favorite comedians in the world is high host Steve Arino. So why don't we go with Steve? Okay, you're a comedian, and uh, Steve is a comedian. I'm kind of glad you, you picked him because I've, I'm wondering what the answer to this is. We asked Steve, in your opinion, who's the funniest man around today? Oh. And he said his name is Alan. Unfortunately, it's Woody Allen. <laughs> or he said, Secretary Watt. <laughs> <laughs> He's really getting the biggest laughs of all. <laughs> now, we know Secretary Watt has put his foot in his mouth a couple of times uh, recently. Uh, yes. but we also know Steve is a big fan of comedy. Maybe he is a big fan of Woody Allen's. What do you think? Well, uh, I'm a big fan of Steve Allen. And I, 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 you know, I've, I've heard him on the subject of comedy. And I, I somewhere vaguely remember in, uh, in his interviews saying that he was really a big fan of... Uh, of Woody Allen. Of Woody Allen. But you know, the second one is so typically Steve Allen to say something witty like that. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll go with the first one. Okay, he really one vote, vote for Woody Allen. One vote. And the second Woody one Allen. could be typical. Steve is political yes. for sure. What do you think, Abby? Yes, he is political, but uh, I don't think there's anything funny about Watt. And I, I think with his sensitivity, I don't think he'd think so either. I think he said Woody Allen. Two votes for Woody Allen. How do you say, Ted? Well, I'm going to disagree. I think he would say something um, that was right, having to do with today and a political comment because he's hysterical. I'll, I think he said Secretary Watt. Okay, you say Secretary Watt. We do have two votes for uh, Woody Allen. Let's find out. Steve Allen, who's the funniest man around today? I think if I had to say one person in our society now who is saying the funniest, most ridiculous, most absurd, hysterically funny things, I would have to say Secretary Watt. <laughs> <laughs> he's really getting the biggest laugh today. <laughs> well, that's what he said, and that's what he thought, and uh, so we're, yes. we're with that. Okay, we had one correct answer. We'll put that on your score. Gives you a total now of 50 points. Let's check the score. 50 points for Ted's team, 30 points for Kathy's team at the end of six questions. Don't forget, 100 points wins the game, and we're going to be back with more famous last words after these words of history. Welcome back to round two of Famous Last Words. Just a reminder, 100 points wins the game. We'll check the score. Ted's team has 50 points. Kathy with 30 points. You have some catching up to do, but in this round, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that because in this round, the correct answer is worth 30 points. Uh -huh. But this time, you're going to have to deal with two stars at once. Here's the way it works. I'm going to read a quote, and you'll have to determine who said it. We always start with the team that's behind. Kathy, that's you. Uh, we will let you have, by the way, the benefit of your celebrity partner's advice before you make your decision. Here's the first two stars. We have to predict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Take care of your guests. Okay. okay, we have Brenda Vaccaro and Mike Farrell. One of these stars said, it's hard to find a married man who is as honest with his wife as he is with his mistress. Now, do you think that came out of the mouth wow. of a woman or a man? Vicky? Who said that, Brenda Vaccaro oh, or Mike Farrell? Darn, that's hard. Gosh, uh, it's hard to find a married man who's as honest with his wife as he is with his mistress. Right. I have no idea. I'm going to guess Brenda Vaccaro. Brenda Vaccaro, okay. That's, uh, you feel Brenda Vaccaro? Charlie, who, who do you think <coughs> said that? Mike Farrell or Brenda Vaccaro? Can I guess Vincent Price? <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Okay, uh, that sounds like a woman's answer. I would think it would have to be Brenda. Okay, How would Mike know? Kathy, you've had uh, advice from both your stars, and they're unanimous. They think it's Brenda Vaccaro. You can agree, or you don't have to. Who do you think said it's hard to find a married man who's as honest with his wife as he is with his mistress, Brenda Vaccaro or Mike Farrell? I think, again, I'm going to have to disagree with my teammates. What? That Mike Farrell, since he was a married man... And a mistress. <laughs> <laughs> ...would know. Um, and I think that he would say okay. that it's hard to find a, a married man who's as honest with his wife as with his mistress. So you say, you, say, okay. you say Mike Farrell. Yes. Uh, you've disagreed with the celebrities before. It's done you uh, pretty well. We'll see what happens yeah. this time. Uh -oh. For 30 points, yes, thanks, <laughs> who said it? Was it Mike Farrell? It's hard to find a married man who 
is as honest with his wife as he is with his mistress. <laughs> but she didn't mean it. <laughs> it was Brenda Vaccaro, and maybe you should have gone along with the celebrities oh, that time, oh, Kathy. I no oh, score. You sit with 30 points. Oh, and let's go over dear. to your opponents. Yeah. Now we have two more stars for you to deal with. Uh, we interviewed Ronald Reagan's daughter, and we interviewed Henry Fonda's son. And we asked them about what they missed most when they were growing up. One of those two, either Peter Fonda or Maureen Reagan, said this about growing up. Having parents is the one thing that I missed most. Now, do you think that came from the son of Henry Fonda or from the daughter of the President of the United States? Abby? Oh, it sounds like Peter Fonda to me, since he didn't. I mean, his, par his parents were divorced all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, we have. Endlessly. We've heard a lot about Peter Fonda and his feelings. So you say Peter Fonda. Mm -hmm. Could be Peter Fonda. Richard Klein, what do you think? Yeah, well, I agree with Abby. I, having parents is the one thing that I miss most. Yeah, I would think so. He's kind of a maverick and uh, probably didn't have a tremendously happy home life. I don't know. I'm just, who knows? Okay. But I would say Peter said that. Ted, you get the same advice from both your celebrity partners. They say Peter Fonda. Who do you think said having parents is the one thing I miss most? Maureen Reagan or Peter Fonda? I like their assessment of the, what's happening. I think Peter Fonda would say he missed having parents. If you're right, it's worth 30 points to you. Was it Peter Fonda? Round and round she goes, and it comes up to be... Having parents was the one thing I missed most. Mm, yeah. Mm. Sad thing to say, but it's worth 30 points to you. You have a total now of 80 points. Good for you. Hang in there. And coming back to Kathy's team, Kathy, the two stars here for your team to deal with are Lynn Redgrave and Steve Allen. Interesting combination. One of these stars said this to us. No woman ever quite believes that her husband loves her at all times. Now, the question is, is it Lynn Redgrave who needs reassurance, or is it Jane Meadows who keeps saying, Steve, tell me you love me, tell me you love me. Charlie, what do you think? Lynn Redgrave. That's all. Lynn Redgrave. Without a doubt. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Says Lynn Redgrave seems mm -hmm. to be pretty positive about that. Who do you think said it? Lynn Redgrave or, or Steve Allen, Vicki? Uh, gee. The one time I met Jane Meadows, her, her words of wisdom to me were, never let them get ahead of you, dear. <laughs> and I've never forgotten that. I thought it was interesting. Uh, I have a feeling that maybe she needs a little reassuring. Um, so I will say Steve Allen. Steve Allen, you say. Does that you make have, any sense at all, what I just said? Makes sense to me, sure. Made absolutely none to me. <laughs> well, Kathy, there you are. You have a selection from Charlie. You have some advice from uh, Vicki Lawrence. Now it's up to you. Who said no woman ever quite believes that her husband loves her at all times? Steve Allen or Lynn Redgrave? Well, I think I'm going to go with Charles and agree that Lynn Redgrave would say such a thing. Lynn Redgrave. Mm -hmm. If she said it, it's worth 30 points. Let's find out. Was it said by Lynn Redgrave? <laughs> no woman ever quite believes that her husband loves her at all times. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 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 And distressing. Again, no score except for 30 points. And the news over here now is that this is for the game. So let's see who you have to deal with. It is Brenda Vaccaro and Phyllis Diller. And in an interview, one of these stars said, a man will never succeed with me by trying to take me home without dinner first. <laughs> Richard, this is for well, the game. Who do you think uh, had their priorities in order? I'm just, I'm gonna have to go with the obvious. It just seems like uh, a Phyllis Diller line, unless they're trying to whip snappers here or something, you know, trick us. Well, you know, not, because one of those stars did say it, so. I realize no that, and therefore that. I'm wholeheartedly gonna say Phyllis Diller. Phyllis Diller, okay. What do you think, uh, Abby? Uh, for the same reason, I'm going to say Brenda. <laughs> what's, what's the reason? Uh, I just think that she would do, have said that, that and, and send me some flowers, too, would help. Okay, well, we know that Phyllis Diller is a comedian who could say that. We also yes, know that Brenda Vaccaro uh, puts on weight every once in a while. She could be uh, into dinner. <laughs> so, a spaghetti dinner. Let's find out. Ted, uh, you well, can go either way you want to. They've both given you the benefit of their expertise. Right, and it's both very possible uh, that Phyllis Diller would say that. Um, uh, my intuition just says Brenda Vaccaro. I'm going to agree with Abby that Brenda Vaccaro would like a dinner first. If it's right, it's 30 points, and it's the game. So for the game, was it Brenda Vaccaro? <laughs> a man will never succeed with me by trying to take me home without dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Ted. You got the 
Justin Shepard the game. All right. Good. Hang on just a second. Kathy, we have to say goodbye to you. We have some nice oh. gifts for you backstage. I hope you had a good time. I did. I had a great time. And I bet you know a little bit about, more about the stars than before you came here. I think so. Okay. Thanks a lot for playing with us. <laughs> Thank you. And you, Ted, you'll be back in just a few moments. You win. You have $250. We're going to give you a chance in a moment to turn that $250 into $4,000 right after this word of interest. We'll be right back. Okay, Ted, you've won the game. You have yourself $250, which you can now double on each question and build it up to $4,000. Now, during the show, you've had the chance to learn something about people like uh, well, Mike Farrell, Phyllis Diller, Steve Allen, many others. And while you were playing, you should have learned something about the celebrity players here on the panel. Let's find out how much you did learn about them. In a moment, all four of our celebrity panelists are going to reveal something about themselves, some attitude or, or, or personal opinion, and you have to predict what each one has said. Now, first of all, let me give each celebrity a different question, and uh, we'd like you to write your answer with a short phrase, six words or less. Okay, Vicki Lawrence, we'll start with you. Complete this statement. Okay, Jeff. When a man begins to cry, when a man begins to cry... Once more, could you give me a better reading? When a man begins to cry... Charlie, here's yours. My kind of woman must, my kind of woman must. <laughs> Abby Dalton, this is yours. When I was a teenager, I was Richard Klein. Complete this statement. I'd like to spend a weekend. Now, let me explain that as our celebrities are writing uh, to their spontaneous answers, those responses are being transmitted backstage to a receiver. Our operator backstage will then type their answers. You'll see them flashed on the screen, but They'll appear with another answer that we prepared in advance. You have to select the celebrity's real answer. You all set? Yeah. Okay, let's see. We're all set. We said to Vicki Lawrence, when a man begins to cry, and she said, I'll do anything he wants, or it's time for a double martini. Well, I think Vicki's sense of humor won out. Uh, I think she said it's time for a double martini. All right, let's see if you can double your $250 to $500. Vicki, when a man begins to cry... Smirnoff, with an olive. <laughs> double, straight up. All okay, it's time for double marking. Got yourself $500, you're on your way. Now let's see if we can double up to 1000 We asked uh, Charles Siebert to complete this. My kind of woman must, and he said... must at least three times a week. <laughs> Said, must have her own ego. Now, one of those he wrote 30 seconds ago, one of those we wrote. Which do you want to pick? I'll go, I would think Charles would say he likes a woman to have her own ego. Must have her own ego. You're going to see if you can double $500 to 1000 Charlie Siebert, my kind of woman must... At least three times a week. <laughs> from Charles, but that's what he said. You still have the $500, still trying to double it to 1000 We said to Abby Dalton, when I was a teenager, I was, and she said, I was a giant pain in the neck. <laughs> or she said, I was taller than the whole school. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I think she was taller than the whole school. Let's see if we can double that 250 to 500. Here we go. Abby Dalton, when I was a teenager, I was... Taller than the yeah. whole school. So you got yourself $1,000. $1,000 and try to double it to $2,000. We said to Richard Klein, I'd like to spend a weekend. And he said, <laughs> with Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> or he said, with Jessica Lange. Now, one of those is his statement. I think with the recent movies out, anybody in their right mind would want to spend a weekend with Jessica Lange. Okay. $500, trying to double it to 1000 <laughs> Richard Klein, I'd like to spend a weekend. Well, I'm an actor, right? So I want to spend it with uh, Lord Lawrence Olivier. Lawrence Olivier. Yeah. Good enough, Ted. 
Hey, you got yourself a thousand dollars. Congratulations. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be back in a minute with more famous last words. Last words, Ted, you got yourself $1,000. We'll see you here tomorrow. Great. Thank I want to thank the celebrities. Vicki Lawrence, thanks a lot. Thank you. Charlie Siebert, it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you Abby Dalton. Richard oh, Klein, thank you, Jeff. What thanks a, nice a lot. Day. You were terrific. We'll see you all here tomorrow. All four of our celebrities are going to be back with a new challenger and some more famous last words from Ed Asner, Bonnie Franklin, Sally Struthers, many more of your favorite stars. Until then, this is Jeff Edwards for Famous Last Words. See you tomorrow. <laughs> If you like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more and check out my Facebook page for other exciting content.